Egypt is an incredible place with more history than everywhere else on Earth combined, and lots of it secret. That's why it's so common for odd things to turn up there. These are the strangest discoveries in Egypt. Number 20. Hidden Chambers in the Sphinx to say scientists were shocked to find these secret hidden chambers in the Sphinx is an understatement. The Great Sphinx of Giza has always been a bit of a mystery to historians, but a top historian has claimed that there might be lost loot buried beneath it. This massive monument is one of the most famous in Egypt and dates back around 4,500 years. It's next to the Great Pyramid of Giza and very little is known about it aside from its age and size. UK historian Dr. Bettany Hughes claims that the two chambers underneath the Sphinx might be worth excavating, with the chance that they might contain treasure. So far, there's evidence to suggest that the Sphinx sits on top of chambers and tunnels, and Bettany believes that the deep hole near the Sphinx's tail might connect to a large room. She also thinks it could be linked to Khufu, who was an ancient king of Egypt. Given that the Sphinx has been described as a monumental guard dog, there's every reason to believe that it's actually guarding something, and it might only be a matter of time before we find out what's lurking underneath this massive 240-foot-long monument. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. A Mummy Cache the Saqqara Plateau forms part of the necropolis or cemetery of the ancient Egyptian city of Memphis. It has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since the 1970s and is where you'll spot the Giza pyramids and a wide variety of tombs. You might think that we've finished finding things in this area after all these decades, but we haven't. As recently as early 2021, archaeologists found about 100 painted wooden coffins containing mummified people from about 2,500 years ago. The coffins were found alongside about 40 statues and a bronze sculpture, and they all date back to around the 26th dynasty, even though the shafts had been opened many times to inter more people. According to the Egypt Supreme Council Secretary General Mustafa Waziri, the owners of these coffins might have been priests and high officials. The coffins were painted vibrant colors and didn't appear to have been opened since they were placed there all those thousands of years ago. Some even contained Egyptian hieroglyphics. Archaeologists also discovered a sealed door, so they expected to find even more treasures and coffins. According to the First Minister of Antiquities and Tourism, Khalid Al-Anani, the artifacts were in an excellent preserved state and would go on display at the Grand Egyptian Museum. Number 18. Sealed Coffins in Luxor Archaeologists were grinning from ear to ear in Egypt in 2019 when they discovered 20 sealed coffins inside a giant tomb. The coffins were decorated in beautiful colors of red, black, green, and white and had been stacked on top of each other in two perfect layers. The coffins were uncovered near Luxor, and the Antiquities Ministry described it as one of the most important and largest finds in recent years. They were found on the west bank of the Nile River, which used to form part of Thebes, the ancient Egyptian capital which is now Luxor. Thebes used to be known to ancient Egyptians as Waset and sat about 500 miles from the Mediterranean. Today, all that's left of this city are ruins within the much more advanced society of Luxor. There were many reasons to celebrate this discovery. First of all, they were well-preserved and colorful, and you could see all the paintings and inscriptions still present on them. Secondly, they were still sealed, which was incredibly rare, and pointed to them having never been discovered before. The Egyptian antiquity the Antiquities Ministry didn't say how old the coffins were, but it's believed that most tombs in the necropolis held government officials and nobles that were buried during the late period in Egypt. This period lasted from 664 to 332 BC. Number 17. The Sacred Animals Cache Many unique discoveries were made in Egypt in 2018 and 2019, but perhaps few are as exciting to archaeologists and animal lovers as an entire cache of mummified animals. If you think you treat your animals like royalty, then you haven't seen how the ancient Egyptians treated them. In 2018, archaeologists found hundreds of artifacts near the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara, which lies south of the capital. Not only did they find masks, statues, and about 75 cat statues of wood and bronze construction, but plenty of mummified birds, crocodiles, cobras, and cats. 
These artifacts were unveiled at an exhibition near the Saqqara necropolis for the world to see. While it was clear what most of these animals were, archaeologists needed confirmation on a couple, so they undertook testing to verify whether up to five of the mummified animals were, in fact, lion cubs. Even though archaeologists often find mummified cats, they very rarely come across the intact remains of lions. But that wasn't even the most exciting part. They also found a large scarab statue, which the Secretary General of the Super Supreme Council of Antiquities, Mustafa Waziri, says is the most lovely discovery out of all of them. In fact, he described it as the biggest scarab in the world. Number 16. The Screaming Mummy in 1881, archaeologists found the Deir el Bahari royal cache in Luxor, which consisted of corpses of royal members from various dynasties to protect them from grave robbers. Priests from the 21st and 22nd dynasties had taken it upon themselves to protect these bodies at all costs. But when the cache was found, one of the mummies stood out more than most. It was dubbed the Screaming Mummy because it was a poorly embalmed mummy with its mouth agape and it appeared to be screaming. DNA testing and CT scans concluded that the mummy was the corpse of Prince Pentaware, the son of King Ramses III. The prince was forced to hang himself for his involvement in the harem plot to kill his father. It appears he was successful too, since scientists determined that the king had died after his throat was slashed. After Prince Pentaware died, he was further punished by not being mummified or treated like the royalty he was. He was wrapped in sheepskin, which is considered unpure, while all other mummies are covered in white linen. In the same cache, scientists also discovered another mummy that appeared to be screaming in pain. She became known as the Screaming Woman Mummy. She had a tilted head, and her legs were bent and wrapped around the ankles. Most other mummies have their mouths closed and are positioned straight. Although great care was taken with her mummification, unlike the prince, and it's believed she died of a heart attack in the same position she was mummified in. Number 15. Industrial Zone Luxor continues to be full of surprises, and that was certainly the case in 2019. Archaeologists discovered an incredible industrial zone in the Valley of the Monkeys, situated in the West Valley. In this industrial area, they found 30 workshops consisting of houses for storage and funerary furniture cleaning. They also discovered plenty of pottery dating back to the 18th dynasty. The archaeologists had been working at the Valley of the Monkeys since 2017 on the western bank of Luxor, and it was about time they were rewarded for their efforts. They discovered a water tank that the workers would have used, along with hundreds and hundreds of inlay beads, a scarab ring, and golden objects that would have been used to decorate the coffins of members of royal families. They also uncovered an oven that would have been used for clay and pottery burning, and many other items necessary for decorating wooden coffins. But even more surprises were yet to come. Around the same time, they also found tools used to construct royal tombs in the East Valley of Luxor, which would make sense since this area is famed for its many royal tombs. Number 14. A Rare Statue of King Ramses II Every single discovery in Egypt from ancient Egyptian times has been an incredible experience for those involved in excavation efforts, although it's always extra special when what those archaeologists uncover has never been seen before. In 2019, a pink granite statue of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Ramses II was found near Giza. It stood at about three and a half feet tall and had the symbol Ka, which relates to a life force or spirit of someone after their death. The statue was found on the property of a man who had been arrested in that same month for performing illegal excavation works. His property is about 15 miles from Giza near the Temple of Ptah. According to the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, Mustafa Waziri, the discovery is one of the rarest since they had only ever previously found wooden Ramses II statues with the Ka symbol. The fact that this one was made of granite was mind-blowing. King Ramses II ruled between 1279 and 1213 BC during the 19th dynasty in Egypt and built more monuments than any other pharaoh. He had a long, successful reign and was buried in the Valley of the Kings after his death at about age 90. Number 13. Khufu Ship 
The Khufu ship is a full-size solar boat from ancient Egypt that is considered one of the oldest, biggest, and most well-preserved vessels from ancient Egypt. During the 4th dynasty, around 2500 BC, it was sealed in a pit by the Great Pyramid of Pharaoh Khufu as one of many grave goods meant for use in the afterlife. When the 142-foot-long and 19-foot-wide ship was discovered, it was described as a masterpiece of woodcraft. Some experts even claimed that it could sail today if it was put on a river or a lake. When it was excavated, it was preserved in the Giza Solar Boat Museum and was relocated in August of 2021 to the Grand Egyptian Museum. The history of the ship and how it worked isn't really known, but it's a type of solar barge or ritual vessel that would carry a resurrected king and Ra, the sun god, across the heavens. The ship appears to have seen water, and it was possible that it was used as a funerary barge to carry the king's body from Memphis to Giza. Some people also believe Khufu himself might have used it to visit holy places before it was buried with him for use in the afterlife. Number 12. Roman Era Mummy It's common practice to carry out exploratory digs before construction efforts get underway in Egypt. If land developers don't do that, there's a risk that critical archaeological finds will be lost forever. So it's a good thing that happened before a youth center was developed on land in Baharia Oasis, about 186 miles from Cairo. Otherwise, archaeologists may have never found the very first Roman-style mummy. Archaeologist Mahmoud Afifi, who led the dig, said the discovery was part of a cemetery of 14 tombs dating back to the Greco-Roman period. He stated that it was a unique find and confirmed that a mummy was inside the carved plaster sarcophagus. The coffin was only about three feet long, which made archaeologists think they'd stumbled across the tomb of a child. However, the decorations and features allowed them to confirm it belonged to a woman. She was wearing a long tunic, a headscarf, a beaded necklace, a bracelet, and shoes. Colored stones had also been placed in the eyes of the coffin to make it look like she was awake. The lead archaeologist said that they didn't immediately know who she was, but she was likely influential and wealthy based on how much effort had gone into her coffin. Her coffin suggested that she was part of a larger tomb complex, but other similar sites in the area had been destroyed by humidity. Number 11. Burial Shaft with Limestone Sarcophagus In late 2020, archaeologists found a burial shaft housing a limestone sarcophagus and several Lushabti statues in Minya's Tuna El Jebel archaeological area. At first, archaeologists had found a well at a depth of 16.4 feet. However, it wasn't long until they had discovered a sarcophagus made of limestone within it, which depicted the four children of Horus. The sarcophagus was in good condition and sat next to Ushabti statues. After considerable research, they determined that the corpse within the coffin was Jehudi Um Hoteb from the 26th family. He was the son of Garda East, who had been found in 2018 and was the supervisor of the thrones. Getting excited about a single coffin being found might seem strange, but Tuna El Jebel in Minya has not yet been explored thoroughly. As a result, there are believed to be many Egyptian treasures in this area waiting to be found. Tuna El Jebel was the graveyard of Khmun and contained monuments from the late Middle Ages as well as Greek and Roman eras. Tuna El Jebel is famous for its abundance of archaeological tombs, which have helped revive tourism and archaeology that drive people to the region. Number 10. Tomb of the Pyramid Builders Anyone who's ever shown any interest in ancient Egypt has, at one time or another, believed or pondered the idea that enslaved people or Jews were responsible for building the Great Pyramids. Enslaved people have created significant structures and infrastructure throughout history, so it makes sense for the pyramids also to have been. But there's now even more proof than there already was to suggest that those involved in the pyramid's construction were free men. Egypt's chief archaeologist Zahi Hoas unveiled his research on 4,000-year-old tombs found near the pyramids in 2010, which supposedly belonged to pyramid builders. News of pyramid builder tombs existing first broke in 1990 when a tourist on horseback fell over a wall that ended up being a tomb. Even more graves were discovered later with about a dozen skeletons. You might be wondering how simply identifying the graves of pyramid builders could point to them not being enslaved, but it's all about their location. 
Zahi said the tombs were constructed beside the king's pyramid, and if they were slaves, they wouldn't have been able to build their tombs next to their kings. But that's not even the most substantial evidence. It appears that the pyramid builders constructed the tombs themselves and graffitied them with things like Friends of Khufu, who was a pharaoh. Number 9. Strange Egyptian Head Cones if you look closely at ancient Egyptian paintings, you might notice something unusual on some of their heads. It's a type of hat or coffee cup, and no one really knew if they were some kind of symbol or if they actually used to wear these strange accessories. Well, new research has discovered that these unusual head cones actually did exist, because they found two of them dating back about 3,300 years. The head cones were found in one of Egypt's most unusual cities, Akhetaten. This city was only occupied during the 14th century for about 15 years under the rule of a pharaoh, Akhenaten, who named the city. Rumor has it that Tutankhamun was his son. Akhenaten developed a religious system that worshipped just one god represented by the sun. The system was short-lived, much like the city, so it seems. The two head cones that were discovered in this city were found within low-status graves in a worker's cemetery. It appeared that grave robbers had left their mark on these graves, but one was in better condition than the other. Both bodies still had full heads of hair, and the head cones were tangled up in their locks. They were made of beeswax, cream-colored, and measured about 3.14 inches tall. There are many theories about what these cones mean, but some people think they were designed to mimic the social elite. People of low status may have tried to imitate high-status fashion. Number 8. Tomb KV-5 I don't know about you, but I don't imagine huge buildings akin to people's houses when I picture tombs. But that's what makes Tomb KV-5 so unique. This tomb is an underground, rock-cut tomb partially excavated from around 1825 and belonging to Ramses II's son. After its true size was discovered in 1995, it was determined to be the largest tomb in the Valley of the Kings and also one of the most unusual in its style and layout. So far, archaeologists have found a wide range of artifacts, including glass vials, a statue of the god of the afterlife called Osiris, beads, pot shards, and more. The more they excavate, the more they find, such as corridors and rooms that branch off other corridors and rooms. Since around 2006, they have found at least 130 rooms or chambers, and only about 7% of them have been cleared. The tomb is located in the Valley of the King's main branch, close to Armana period tomb like Tutankhamun. Experts think that the tomb may have originally been an 18th century dynasty tomb that Ramses II took over and expanded to accommodate the mummies of his sons. It has taken several years to learn as much as we know about this tomb due to challenges in the area, such as flash flooding that fills it with mud, rocks, and debris. Archaeologists have to be careful to clear the area without damaging artifacts buried within. Number 7. Statues of Sekhmet Visit any museum housing Egyptian collections and you'll probably see at least one statue of Sekhmet. Sekhmet was a goddess of war, chaos, healing, plague, and the hot desert sun, and she was created from the fire in the sun god Ra's eye as he looked upon Earth. During the reign of Amenhotep III, at least 600 Sekhmet statues were created, and they can be traced back to two areas, the Mutt Temple Complex at Karnak on Thebes East Bank and the Mortuary Complex of the King at Kom El Haitan, which is on the West Bank. It's believed that all of the created statues originally came from the Mortuary Temple and formed part of Amenhotep's statue program. They may have been made to appease the goddess Sekhmet and stop her from using her negative powers and keep the king safe from illness and evil for one year. As rising groundwater started affecting the mortuary temple soon after it was made, some of the statues and materials were taken to other sites, such as the Mud Temple Complex. Number 6. Serapium of Saqqara Serapium, which ancient Egyptians called the House of Osirapis, is a mystery even to this day. Auguste Marriott discovered it in 1850, containing about two dozen giant coffins, and the general consensus is that they were used to bury Apis bulls. Apis bulls were worshipped in Memphis, and they used to be mummified and buried in the catacombs at Saqqara when they died. As you might imagine, these coffins were massive, and they were also made of heavy materials like basalt and granite, with some coffins weighing up to 70 tons. 
Serapium has a single 10-foot wide entrance that leads to 24 coffins. When Auguste found them, all but one were open. Auguste's team was unable to open the closed lid since it weighed about 32 tons, so they decided to blow it up and there ended up being nothing inside. The catacombs consisted of two galleries, the Grand Gallery and the Lesser Gallery. The first one had a long 984-foot passage cut under the ground and 24 openings to hold a coffin each. In the lesser gallery, Auguste found a wooden coffin with a human mummy inside. The casket was damaged but well-preserved. It also housed an ushabti and golden mask, which are now in a museum. Alongside statues, it's also quite common to discover amulets depicting her in a seated or standing position. Number 5 Meteorite Jewelry Ancient Egyptians were capable of creating some pretty spectacular things. I mean, just look at the pyramids, and then there are all those artifacts that have been discovered in tombs. So it's probably not actually all that surprising that they made use of what fell from the sky and turned it into something beautiful. When an ancient cemetery near El Gerza was excavated in 1911, archaeologists removed nine tube-shaped beads from a tomb that dated back to about 3200 BC. The tomb belonged to a teenage boy, and the iron beads were strong strung onto a necklace with other exotic materials like gemstones and gold. Testing of the beads revealed high nickel concentrations, which indicated that they might have been pieces of a meteorite, but no one was quite sure if that amount of nickel could also be present in human-made iron. However, after using gamma rays and beams of neutrons, researchers also discovered cobalt, phosphorus, and germanium at high levels, and these only ever come from iron meteorites. After some x-rays were performed, it was also revealed that the beads had been flattened into thin sheets before being rolled into tubes. As meteoritic iron is incredibly hard, researchers have no idea how they were made. Number 4. Electromagnetic Energy we all know how intelligent the ancient Egyptians were, but even they didn't know how smart they were when they built the Great Pyramid of Giza. Current research suggests that this pyramid can concentrate electromagnetic energy under its base and within its chambers. Even though the Egyptians wouldn't have been aware of what they did, they inadvertently created something quite special to help us with nanoparticle research and even the development of tiny sensors and solar cells. A team of scientists applied theoretical physics methods to determine how the Great Pyramid would respond to radio waves, visible light, gamma rays, microwaves, and other electromagnetic radiation. They also wanted to learn how radio waves with a resonant length or proportional wavelengths would interact with the pyramid. They calculated that wavelengths of 656 to 1968 feet would bring about resonance in the pyramids, which involves the pyramid scattering and absorbing more energy from electromagnetic waves than in standard conditions. It's likely that the pyramid's electromagnetic properties are just a structural coincidence rather than something that the ancient Egyptians factored into its design. Number 3. Dendera Light Modern-day electricity is quite a new discovery. We've only had it since around 1879, when Thomas Edison was able to create a long-lasting electric light bulb. The electric motor was also invented in 1821. But could there have been some kind of electricity in the form of lighting during Egyptian times? Some people seem to think so. Underneath the Temple of Hathor in Dendera, you'll find some strange inscriptions that look like some kind of bulb-like objects, such as an early form of light bulb called the Crook's Tube. The inscriptions are in an underground passageway beneath the main temple, and they look to contain a wavy line like a filament and a wire leading to a small box with an air god kneeling on it. Egyptologists think the bulb-like structure is in fact a representation of the womb of Nut, who is the goddess of the sky. But Swiss pseudo-archaeologist Eric von Daniken, who is quite controversial, supports the idea that it might be electrical light. Eric says that it would explain why there are no lamp black deposits in many of the tombs we've discovered. Lamp-black deposits are a type of black pigment produced by burning oil. If you were trying to illuminate a tomb in Egypt, you'd presumably use a candle that would make it. So Eric is basically saying that the absence of black soot means they probably had electricity. What do you think? Number 2. Tomb of the Silver Pharaoh Pharaoh Susens was the ruler of the 21st dynasty from 1036 to 989 BCE, and the tombs of him and his wife, Mutnejmet, were found by French Egyptologist Pierre Monte on the eve of the outbreak of World War II in 1939. 
What should have been a careful excavation project ended up being quite a rushed one, which is perhaps why this incredible discovery is rarely talked about. And it's certainly an underrated discovery, since unlike most pharaohs that are buried essentially dripping in gold, this pharaoh's royal burial chamber was silver. In ancient Egyptian times, gold was a symbol of survival and eternity, whereas silver symbolized the moon. Silver was also much rarer than gold, and his coffin represented great wealth during what was considered the declining years of Egypt. But it wasn't just the silver that shocked Pierre, who discovered him in northern Egypt. The casket showed incredible craftsmanship and detail, and it was one of the most exquisite artifacts ever found. The tomb was also filled with lavish jewels. The problem was the time. As the world was entering a new war, very few people ever heard about the discovery, and it remains one of the most underrated discoveries, even today. Number 1. The Saqqara Glider the Wright brothers were well known for achieving the first manned, powered, controlled flight. But what if their ideas weren't unique? Could the ancient Egyptians have already discovered flight? The Saqqara Glider is an upart, which stands for an out-of-place artifact. Essentially, these are things we found that don't make sense for the time they were supposedly made. During an archaeological expedition, archaeologists found a bird-shaped artifact in a tomb in Saqqara dating back to 200 BC. It was made of sycamore maple wood and cloth and was five 5.51 inches long with a wingspan of 7.09 inches. Even though it does look like a bird, with its beak and eyes similar to those of a hawk, it has a squared upright tail and a small sunken part that looks like something could sit on the top. Basically, it looks like a modern day glider. It also doesn't have any feathers to indicate that it was supposed to be a bird, and it's unclear if it's a toy, a weather vane for boats, or a ritual object. Naturalist biologist Ivan Terran Sanderson replicated the item using balsa wood and was was able to make it fly and glide. Ancient Egyptians may have become the first people to discover flight if they put more thought and time into the idea. Just when you thought Egypt couldn't get any cooler with all its catacombs, mummies, and pyramids, archaeologists go and find some even more extraordinary things. Imagine finding a giant statue or the tomb of a pharaoh. Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? And have you been to Egypt to see artifacts in person? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!